This month's interview is with Mike Menser yet again. We've interviewed him twice already, and we're starting to think we should rename these tapes the Mike Menser Audio Tape Series. The thing is, of all the experts we've interviewed, we've gotten the best response from our tapes with Mike. People love hearing about his high-intensity workout, and let's face it, training information that we can start using immediately without buying any special equipment or supplements is pretty rare these days. How are you, Mike? PC, if I were doing any better, would be literally obscene. <laughs> how, how is that? Well, this, this Mike Mincer, Dorian Yates heavy-duty thing has proliferated in popularity until now. It's a groundswell that is literally phenomenal. In fact, only this morning, and it's only 9.30 Los Angeles time, I received six phone calls from individuals across the country who heard those two, those two first audio tapes, tape number one and number two I did with Bill. People are still responding to those tapes with enormous enthusiasm. And I certainly do appreciate it. Terrific. I'm glad we could help. Now, yeah. listen, there's a chance that some of our listeners are new to the sport of bodybuilding. So could you please synopsize your view of training for them? Tall order, I know. <laughs> All right. That's a, that's a tall order. Let, let me approach it maybe what will seem a little bit obliquely. Okay. The vast majority of bodybuilders, TC, seem to have the idea that the the purpose is to go into the gym like a macho dummy and see how many sets they can do or how long they can endure. A bodybuilding workout is not an endurance contest. There are other individuals who seem to have the idea that the purpose is to go into the gym and do merely less than what everybody else is doing. Since nobody else has the slightest clue as to what they're doing to react blindly and uncritically to that and do merely less is arbitrary also. As I made the point on the last tape, there is no room in science for the arbitrary. The, the idea should be to go into the gym and intelligently perform precisely what nature requires in the way of imposing a training stress and in the right amounts. One of my favorite analogies here lately is goes to medicine, in fact, anesthesiology. TC, if you were going to go into surgery tomorrow, you would very much want the anesthesiologist to infuse or inject your circulatory system with the precise, the key term here is precise amounts of chemical compound required to induce, induce a state of anesthesia. If you were being wheeled into the surgical suite, on the stretcher and you overheard the anesthesiologist say something to the effect, pump them up just like in bodybuilding. Pump them up. Give them more. <laughs> more anesthesia is better than less. You would jump off the stretcher and run out the door. Damn right. You wouldn't feel very good about that. Or if you heard him say something slightly different like, let's infuse TC's circulatory system with a little bit less anesthesia than we gave that guy yesterday. We killed the poor bastard. Let's give TC a little bit less and see what happens. <laughs> now, here's the point. In this particular case where life and death is clearly an issue, it's very easy to see, of course, why scientific precision, again, dear listener, the key term is precision, why scientific precision is so very important. My point is that bodybuilders should take that principle from medical theory and apply it to bodybuilding theory. Again, the idea is not to go into the gym with the idea more is better or less is better. The idea is to go into the gym like an intelligent, rational, logical human being and perform the precise amount of exercise required. Any more than that is overtraining. Going back for a second to this parallel with medical theory, it's interesting. The first thing the medical researchers had to do, of course, was discover or identify the precise chemical compound that would serve to induce a state of anesthesia. Once they discovered that chemical compound, of course, they then had to find out precisely how much was needed. Going back to bodybuilding theory, where, where of course, we're still working with human physiology. In this case, we didn't have to discover a chemical compound to induce anesthesia. We had to discover the training stress that would serve to induce, similar use of terms, induce a state of muscular hypertrophy. Once the training stress was discovered, we then had to find out precisely, 
precisely. I can't emphasize the term enough. We had to discover precisely how much was required. And as it turns out, TC and dear listener, the amount of high-intensity training stress required to induce a strength and muscular size increase ain't nearly as much as many people have been led to believe or would like to believe. In fact, so many people are obsessing with the issue of volume, number of sets, literally obsessing, that they're failing to sit down, take the time, and consider the nature of one actual set of high-intensity training to failure. One set of barbell squats to failure, for instance, might be viewed as something akin to exposing your skin to three hours of intense sunlight. Stop obsessing with the idea of number one. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, the issue of volume, as Arthur Jones pointed out brilliantly years ago, the issue of volume or number of sets, listener, is a negative. Let me state that again. This is perhaps one of the most important issues, TC, I can get across today. The issue of volume, once again, or number of sets, is a negative with a capital N. Whether you do one set, listener, or a hundred sets, insofar that you train at all, even one set is a negative, insofar that you train at all, you're making a, an inroad into the body's recovery ability. And to the extent that you do that, you have that much less of your body's resources left over for overcompensation, which is growth. In other words, the more you train, the more of your body's energies and resources are used in the attempt to merely compensate for the exhaustive effects of the exercise, which is what recovery is. And less of that recovery ability is left over for overcompensation. So to underscore this, to summarize it again, the idea is to have the individual go into the gym and perform the precise amount of exercise required. 